All right, good morning. God bless everybody. Today is January 8, 2021. I'm going to be sharing a dream that I had when I woke up this morning. It was unbelievable, very, very real. And it's not to put us in fear, but it definitely goes in line with a word that the Lord was speaking to me in the middle of the night as well. And then I went back to sleep. I've sort of been up and down since like about three, four o'clock in the morning. So I just thought I would share that. It would be um, something that we can pray about. And always there are multiple meanings, not just the obvious, which I saw in the dream this morning, the vision, but it always has several meanings. And we're going to be reading from Acts chapter 2 this morning that I'm going to be sharing with you. So let's get into the word. And um, here we find ourselves January 8, There we go. God bless you this morning. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to uh, just share this dream this morning that I had. <coughs> Excuse me. This morning. Um, I tried to find a video of something similar to the road that this exact vision was on. I know the road exactly. It was in uh, the name of the road is called Placerita Canyon. I don't have a picture of it because uh, probably be copyright infringements, so I can't do that. But I can tell you, I found a video of a road similar to this road. So I knew exactly where this was in the vision. I knew exactly the place that I was going. And um, what happened was I was on this, uh, it's a long stretch of, I'll say, 10 minutes on the road. It connects the small valley that I live in to basically uh, the freeway to go south into the San Fernando Valley and, and further. So um, I was like driving my car like normal on this road, and it is a... Uh, uh, a regular countryside road. There's only two lanes on it, going one going each direction, you understand. So I was going, and all of a sudden, I was going just like normal on the road, and then all of a sudden, my vision became blurred, blurry vision, like a mirage, like when God shows you and opens your eyes, as in an open vision when you're awake, this is usually what happens with all of the open visions God has given me. An open vision is something that is, you see God opens your eyes when you're fully awake. Um, so I was driving in the car and I was on the road and we were just going like normal. And then the next thing that I knew, my eyes became sort of blurry, like a mirage, like you'd see on a desert road. You know how things would get blurry. And then I was lifted up, raised out of the car because I realized right before I was lifted out of the car that the road was shaking the, as in an earthquake. You know how the road shakes and you can't hold on to the wheel. And I, of course, at the time, I didn't know it was an earthquake. You don't know these things. You just think that the, something's wrong, maybe with your tires or something. So I'm going along, and all of a sudden, it's very hard to stay on the road. And all of a sudden, I realize that the car is going off on the side, and there's this huge 
crevice in the side of the road. And it's like all of the road is falling apart, the entire road, as far as you could see. And I mean huge. So I'm going to get up some video uh, in a moment here of tried to find something of the way it was when I was driving on it and then what it turned into. So you can see, <coughs> and if you could imagine, I'm being raised up as I'm seeing that the car is going to go off and everybody is going to die. All of a sudden, we are lifted up. Oh, I'm going to think of something. You know what I'm thinking of going up. And so all of a sudden, we were lifted up out of the car. And I could see aerially. Is, is that the right word? I could see like as if I was a drone. And I could see the entire road. And it was very similar then to the uh, what I'm So, oh, whoopsie. I, you know what? I don't think you even heard what, did you hear what I said? I hope you did. I'm not sure if you heard what I said because I forgot to put the audio mic on. So, um, I don't think you heard what I said. One minute I was in the car driving and the ne next minute I was lifted up and you can see the difference of those two roads. And it was as though there was no more road. And I have no idea what kind of a magnitude that would be, but there was no more roads, even if you were on the ground. Now, uh, is this just, what is this? You know, I was seeing very clear <clears throat> and the vision went for quite a while, quite a while. And I could see very, very clear. Okay, that's, so I just thought for whatever it's worth, I do believe there's more to it than possibly there's going to be an earthquake, you know, in California. I don't know everything. I just know what I saw and I know exactly where it was. It was in, like I say, Placerita Canyon. And uh, so for the sake of copyright, I can only use footage that I pay for to use, which that footage is paid for footage. So by your donations, I will say, I'll let you know where your money's going when you guys send in donations. It goes to things like that so that I can show you visually because otherwise I would uh, have a strike and I don't want that. Um, 
I'm going to be reading now from Acts chapter 2 because I'll tell you what I see prophetically just from the vision itself this morning, which today is January 8. I have no idea what's really on the news. I haven't watched anything. I don't know what's breaking. Um, I think there's a lot to it. I think it has multiple meanings. Of course, the obvious is it's a real earthquake that's going to be striking California. The other obvious thing to me is the turnover in the leadership of the United States. The earth is breaking. The earth is shaking. The earth is breaking. Roads that used to be will be no more. <coughs> there will be no more roads as we have. That means the normal way you traveled, the normal things you did. Life is going to, and I would say, take a drastic change because there's, you know, if it was a little change, there'd just be a crack in the road. But this was so big that God raised me up, raised me up and got me out of danger. That's another word that I see. God is going to raise us up Though the road and everything is going to disappear in front of us, God is our God. He and my hands are going. He is going to protect us. Though all of these things are going to happen, our God is going to take care of us. So to me, that's an alarming word about this earthquake, but it's also a very reassuring word that God is with us. Amen. So let me just share a little, and I haven't even turned on uh, to see what's going on in the chat. I want to stick with the word right now, and then I'll go to the chat in just a few moments. Um, Peter's sermon, Acts chapter 2, number 14. I will just read a few, a few little bit here. Wow. Wow. Well, I'd like to read a whole lot, but I, I don't know how much you guys are up for this morning. Peter's sermon. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit. Thank you, Jesus, in those days. And they shall prophesy. Praise God. It reminds me right away of the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news you know, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Wonders in the heavens above. Wonder. How many pictures have we seen? Uh, people have taken, uh, uh, governments have taken even. You remember that big eye, picture of the eye in the sky. That was a wonder. Everybody wondered about that. And there was another one of a hand. And I mean, just amateur people have taken pictures of, of you would say, angels. Things that just we can't, there's not an answer for, but it just stops you in your tracks and you go, wow, I what is that? Like, if that is not a sign from God, I don't know what is. Because it just stops them totally. And they have to acknowledge there is a God. I will show wonders in heaven above. We've been having that. And signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. This to me is earthquakes 
in the earth that the volcanoes are going to really begin shaking. I believe there are about 17 active earthquakes. I mean, volcanoes, excuse me, under, I think it's under the ocean that are active right now. Of course, they're all along the ring of fire, as we know, but they are, it's like they're grumbling. They're, they're rumbling. They're, they're just, you know, it's just like, oh, like a pressure cooker. And all it's going to take is something to go pop. And they're just, I mean, what if all five of five or six of them pop all at once? Or it's a chain reaction kind of thing. I don't know. But, uh, of course, we know there has been activity. It's like I don't, it's not that I don't know that California's ring of fire has been active. But just taking California as example, I would not be surprised if we do have something that will stop a lot of people. Now, sometimes when God shows you things, like when he gave me a direct huge vision of um, the big tsunami that happened, I think it was in 2000, what was it, 2003, you know, of the islands that the, the, a lot of people died. He gave me that vision about one year before that happened, just about one year to the day. I can't remember exactly, but I saw it when I was over in England and I saw the vision and then it happened and it was just like one year from that time. So what I'm saying is when God gives you a vision, it doesn't necessarily come to pass that day, that week, that month. Sometimes it comes to pass later, but it's still something God has given you. You can surely know that. I will show sign I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath. So that is a sign. If God starts you know, just the fact that these earth these volcanoes under the earth are all active, that's like a sign to everybody, hey, you better wake up, get your life in order with God, because this may be your last day. We don't know. I mean, not even speaking about, you know, the the politicians or anything like that. We're just talking about natural things that could happen. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness the moon into blood. That right there is a volcano. And we know Hawaii has had a volcano that has been active. There are, uh, I believe over in uh, Italy, there is another one that has been active before. And the, blood, uh, <clears throat> the, sun and the, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Okay, what is the great and awesome day of the Lord? The tribulation, of course, the seven years. So before those seven years is the way I interpret this, it says it plainly. You don't, it's not that I'm making it into something. It plainly says before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, all of these things are going to happen. And they and and so far we have seen quite a few, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the bottom line. The bottom line is make sure that you are calling on the name of the Lord. You have given your life to Jesus, to the you know, you've given him your life. So let me go on here, down. Let me just see here what else I, the Lord would have me pull out. Hold on just a moment. Okay. And uh, number 40. A vital church grows, and with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. 
That to me is very, very key, very key. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Wow. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continual, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. I love that. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Can you imagine? Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. You know, that I believe is where we are very close to seeing a lot more souls come in <clears throat> because with the change of the status quo the way it was God is actually I think purifying a lot of souls I was just uh, sharing with Debbie on the phone the other day and listening to her telling me about how right across the street from her this huge tree just fell down fell down and Debbie said possibly somebody God is dealing with someone in that place where it fell next to I said of course oh that's obvious to me and you know things are happening trees are falling helicopters are constantly flying over our heads do you think that's a coincidence? And now God shows me this, that we are going to be having all of the ground that has been there for many years under our feet is going to be removed. The solid ground is being removed. Okay, I'm going to come in the chat here. I'm going to see what people are saying hold on I'm gonna renew this refresh this I want to see what you guys are saying forgive me if it goes on an echo for a second yeah okay I do have my audio turned off I see Eric is in the house. God bless you, Eric. Mike Hill. Well, it's a nice thought. We know you feel the earth move sometimes in California. My dad needs a plain miracle. We hope he continues to strengthen. Father, we just lift up Mike's father. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we lift him up. We lift him up. Okay, good. Yeah, sound off. Okay, and Valerie is saying there that the sound... I'm going to turn this because I think audio light is over there. Is that better? Let me look and see. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that light. I just... That light is, is awful. And since I was up in the nighttime a lot, um, I just couldn't get up here really quickly. Okay, big one with many deaths, yeah. So that's basically the dream, you guys. I 
and I gave you the word that I felt led of the Lord. I don't know what else to do is that all we do is we pray and and we continue to seek the Lord and <clears throat> we stay in peace because we don't want to be um, having fear about things because uh, we don't want to worry about something. You don't want to dwell on this uh, for days and try to think about all of the things it could mean. It's just, you know, it's a daily thing that we have with God. It's a daily relationship. So we just wake up and and sometimes God gives us dreams like this. And to just let us know these things are, change is positively, positively happening. And so if I, uh, Special Force Navy, God bless you. Thank you for coming today. And Dave, you're good, Susan. Okay, thank you, Dave, for letting me know. Um, shalom. Shabbat shalom to those that are uh, walking in uh, reading the completed Jewish Bible. Amen. Okay, Beverly, praying for everyone who lives in D.C. metropolitan area today. That's where most of my family is. Wow. Of course. Well, uh, I just know that um, many things are changing. We cannot have anxiety. You don't want to worry. You don't want to stress out. Uh, like, like Deborah was saying, Deborah and I were sharing on the phone the other day. I said, we just need to, Deborah says, I just want to be in that happy place with God. You know, I just want to stay there. And I said, yeah, that's why the Lord has me writing about a rainbow, you know, and all the colors, how beautiful the colors of the rainbow, uh, what they uh, represent biblically, you know, the different colors of the rainbow. Um, and to keep our minds stayed upon that, right? Upon the Lord. Um, like, I'll just read a few words that I've been uh, putting together with that. Could this be the Great Awakening? Of course, Valerie, totally. I always see that there is more than one thing. You know, it's multiple things God is showing us. So I think you were on at the beginning, Valerie. And I think, uh, yeah, I totally believe that is a very very uh possibility you know it's a great awakening a lot of people are going to wake up why because everything is going it's like the rug is going to be pulled out from people people that are saying everything's going to be prosperous and you're going to get you know uh, a lot of wealth monetary monetarily I can't even say it this morning monetarily and you know to believe something that is absolutely for what reason would God make you will say an instant millionaire right now why why would God do that if it, if you know what I mean unless God has a definite reason he knows we're going to be here for a while and and there's a reason you know but just for no reason you know to believe well we want to stay in God's perfect will. That's what I have to say. Okay, what? Uh, so the different colors. Think about this. You know, I was uh, I'll share with you guys a little bit about this rainbow song. The ideas that it have been going crossing my mind as I'm writing it is uh, the colors of the rainbow, and of course, the rainbow represents God's promise. God's promise over us that we are safe is, uh, you know, the colors of the red, rainbow are uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo. Those are the colors, basically, of the rainbow. And um, so just taking the color red, for example, red represents the blood of Jesus. We always think of that. Life we think of there's life in the blood. That's why they want to come up against our blood that's inside of us. Because when you're born again, you become a new cre creation. A new creation. Salvation, of course. Courage. Redemption. Fire. Courage. 
fervent love, sacrifice, and war. Uh, there was a thing that I was reading about the color red also, that it was uh, very expensive many years ago to uh, produce the color red into clothing, supposedly. I was reading this. And <clears throat> so only people that had a lot of money could afford something red. I didn't go any further with it because I was just really going into all the other. Shabbat Shalom to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Orange is another. Well, now, orange is really, uh, let's see. I just said him a moment ago. What were the colors? Orange, I don't think, was in it. Um, in blue and indigo. Okay. Um, blue, light blue is heaven, Holy Spirit, divinity, serenity, revelation. You know, I look at these colors too, and I think about, you know, how people say royal blue, Roy. What is Eric saying? Rainbow as, oh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And violet make the rainbow. <laughs> Thank you. Let's sing again. I, I just love that song. I don't know if you guys have ever had grandchildren, but I do. And I uh, found this little uh, place on YouTube called Baby Bum, B-U-M. And my kids just love it. And every time I come up there, they want to have grandma's telephone so they can play the rainbow song. So I can sing it just a little bit. It's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet make the rainbow. <laughs> and violet, indigo, and violet make the rainbow. Let's sing again. And it's children sliding down the rainbow, you know, like they're, and it's just so great. It just lifts your spirits. If you're feeling depressed, just turn on one of those little kids' songs because, you know, everything we do doesn't have to uh, have wings on it. And, but anyway, it's just beautiful. And so the Roy, <clears throat> excuse me, the color royal blue is revelation, authority. Think about this. Let's think on the good things this morning. Kingship, priesthood, faithfulness, purple, kingship again, majesty, royalty, uh, mediator, creativity is purple. Wealth. I'm going to say wealth in Christ. Reigning with Christ. Uh, green. Prosperity. Well, of course, everybody's going to think of money, right? Money. Green is money. <laughs> prosperity, they say it. You know, they're not going to say money. They say prosperity, which is fine. <laughs> but, you know, prosperity of many kinds, we're going to say. New life and growth, green. I like that. I think of the forest. I can't help but think of the forest, the trees when I go it. Nikki says, purple is my favorite color. See, you're very prophetic, Nikki. That right there. You're very uh, exotic, I'm going to say. Oh, I love to just see over people. I see Nikki as very exotic, very passionate, very you like a seer kind of person that creativity you do things wholeheartedly you're all in if you say you're going to do something you you do it you know you do that that's what i see and like i said a seeing kind of person too you're a seer of the lord green prosperity okay did i say that prosperity new life and growth fresh think of things that are fresh Healing, healing, I think of yellow, but healing is also green. They say if you want to feel good, put green on, put a green shirt on, you'll feel better. Hope, peace, victory, and rest. And listen to the word black. Wow. You ever know anybody that says, I love the color black? Black represents, right, here we go, death, mourning, sin, judgment, evil, humility, and fear of God. 
I think of David. You know how he threw the sand over his... Remember when David's uh, Bathsheba's baby died? And David, you know, he went and he fasted until he got the news that the baby was gone. And then he he uh, quit praying and fasting. And he says, well, the baby's not going to come to me anymore. Why should I continue? And so he decided that was enough and that God had answered him and taken the baby. What about cobalt blue? Cobalt blue. It doesn't say, it just says light blue and royal blue. Uh, cobalt. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, Eric. I don't know. <laughs> Love new life in green, Cheryl, Cheryl says, yeah. Good morning. Had to let you know. The words you spoke over me yesterday about the lantern and the barn. A lantern is a bright future illuminating the darkness. Move you forward. Oh, that's beautiful, Nikki. Reclaim our rainbows. God gave it to us as a sign. Valerie says, amen. My son watched Baby Bum. They are totally awesome. Yeah, Jesus Christ says, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a good one. I don't know how you got that one. It was available. You must have had it a few years. That, that one. I enjoy them with him and sing the songs all the time. I do too. I love Baby Bum. I mean, it's just so cute. Purple is the color of royalty, Valerie says. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Rich, rich cut. Cutler, it seems the Lord is showing Perry Stone the same visions. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know that. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. Whoa. It just, like, blew me over. Amber, presence of God, fiery passion, Wisdom, temple of God, God's anointing, amber. You know, you, you think of these colors, too, and you think of all of the jewels, you know, that the priests have on their uh, breastplate that they, that they go in. It's on their uh, clothing, special things that they put on. Okay, let's continue. Lilac is a light purple or orchid, orchid color. I love that color. Care, the father's concern over the lilies of the field. Did you know that? We're all learning something new. Unless you guys knew this. I didn't know all this. Light blue is heaven, Holy Spirit, divinity, serenity, revelation. Orange is warning, change, Prophetic ministry, ambition, harvest, strength, and endurance. So, how are you doing, Christine? Good to see you. I hope that you're feeling okay, Christine. I know that you were uh, had some appointments the other day. My goodness. Interesting about the colors and what they mean, Dick, Nikki says. Yeah, I was... I. You know, and, and actually, it was that song um, about the rainbow that just drew me in because a lot of this uh, music that is just so happy, you know. Okay, let's see here. Blue Royal. Okay, we did do that. Pink and Rose. I don't think we talked about that. Pink and the color Rose means new life, kingliness. Father's Heavenly Care, Feminine, and the Rose of Sharon. Brass, forward slash copper. Brass and copper means uh, the altar, the atonement, and forgiveness. And of course, purple is kingship, majesty, royalty, mediator, creativity, wealth, reigning with Christ. You know what's fun is, why don't, I'd like to, I'm curious what you guys like. God uses symbolism because he knows we will not understand his reasoning. <laughs> That's a good one, Valerie. Yeah. I, I'm curious, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite color? Be funny for us to 
you know, we always do funny things at, uh, also because not all can hear him clearly. So he uses symbol ex exactly, Melinda. The uh, color of bronze means judgment of sins and testing by fire. Wow, you think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were put in the fire. Silver means redemption, refined, words of the Lord, and words of righteousness. Here we go, fuchsia. Purple, as a matter of fact. Valerie likes purple. I wear a lot of blue. Beverly says, yeah, I my favorite color is blue. It always has been ever since I was a baby. I, you know, I just always grab the blue cup, the blue cup glass, the blue plate. I had to have the blue everything. That was me. And I still like blue. And Dave likes red. I could see that, Dave. I would be guessing Dave would like red because, see, Dave is that kind of guy. <laughs> and I don't know what color Eric likes. Let's see, if I was to guess Eric, what would I guess? I, I see blue or green over Eric. And that could be wrong, but that's what I see, Eric. I see you as a like a... See, there's, there's different personalities. There's different, you know, God creates us all differently. And that's great. Thank God we are different. Could you imagine if we were all the same? Fuchsia means joy, compassion, and right relationship. Dave's going to Dave's going to give us a let's see. He knows our pea brains and needs visuals. <laughs> That's a good one. Yep, red for Dave. Yeah. Happy day. Chrissy, God bless you. Chrissy, what's your favorite color? We're going over colors this morning because I already gave the word. <laughs> I already shared the dream and shared the word. We read the word Acts chapter 2. I like fuchsia and purple, Lena. Yeah, I can see that over Lena. My daughter loves purple. She always has ever since she was a baby. Purple and purple is very prophetic. Also, it's a color of royalty. And But you're also very, uh, what do they call that? <clears throat> and green, yeah. Emerald green, Chrissy. Oh, wow. Let's see what green is here. Did I? I know I read it. Let me go back green prosperity new life and growth fresh healing hope peace victory and rest okay, let me go down here brown does anybody like brown earthy colors you know earth devotion earthen vessels Humanity, humility. Yeah, <laughs> I see forest green. I could see that, Terry. I could see Sherry, Cheryl. My favorite is periwinkle, right between purple and blue. Wow, how beautiful. Purple and blue make periwinkle. So that's what Perry, yeah, I didn't, I was trying to think in my brain, Periwinkle, I, I think it was a blue, but it's between purple and blue. So it's sort of like indigo. Is that, is that right? Is it's a dark color because it has to be, it's between blue and purple. Wow. They are building new community down the road from us. Each section seems to have a different theme, but most of the houses look exactly the same. I keep thinking cookie cutters. Exactly. That's one of those new, uh, new things they're building. You know, the cities, the, what do they call those uh, things where everybody, they want them to all live in cracker boxes, basically. Okay, let's see. Bronze means judgment of sins. Testing by fire. Fuchsia means compassion, joy, and the right relationship. Turquoise, jasper. You know what color turquoise is. It's a light blue-green. River of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Tranquility. Serenity. <coughs> Patience relaxation, 
and communication is turquoise. You know, you think of turquoise, you think of light blue, like up in the sky. It's a blue, a turquoise is a blue green, you know, it's, I always loved uh, the color of um, like a blue green. I don't know, and not a light blue green, not a dark blue green, but in the middle there where it's just that gorgeous, it has, and the other color that, believe it or not, that I like too, because I think it's some cars that had this, I, can't, I think it was the Mazda. <clears throat> There's like a fire red. It's like in between orange and... Uh, it's like in between... It's like ruby red, like the ruby red shoes that Dorothy wore, you know, on the Wizard of Oz. But it has a fire, like an orange uh, cast, like an over... Whatever you call that, where they put it on, you know, that clear... And I always... I saw that, and every time I see that car on the road, that manufacturer with it's a certain paint, you know, that they only that manufacturer has it. I think it's Mazda that has that. And it's just absolutely gorgeous every time I see that red, you know, and I'm not a fan of red, but when I see that, it, you know, that color, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that color is beautiful. Just like the houses most of us grew up in. <laughs> Mint green is nice, too. Yes, Chrissy. I love mint green. <laughs> yeah, I do, too. Let's see if there's anything else here. Gold. Did We didn't talk about gold yet. Gold is glory, Godhead, refining process, kingship, words of wisdom, and truth, and knowledge, faith, anointing oil and kingship why did they write kingship twice so that's what gold is if you like the color gold i always liked the color silver because it was different than gold you know everybody gold is so obvious you know if you have a choice gold or silver oh everybody wants gold but i always liked silver because it was so shiny you know i guess i i always was drawn to shiny things White is, good morning, Sandy. Just checked online and periwinkle is also called lavender blue. Wow. Chrissy says, I just bought a mint green toaster. It's kind of retro. Yeah, I, I saw some things in mint green. Or they're trying to bring back that red color, too. Like the 50s diners, you know, with the red. I've seen that, too. Okay, white how many of you guys like white? I had a time in my life. I think we all have times in our life seasons where we like different colors. And there was a time in my life that I just loved white. Everything was, I, all I wanted was white. I got a white piano for a Christmas present. That was a gift. And uh, right now, actually, um, you know, on, on my bedspread, everything is white. I like white. Um, uh, if you go to a lot of expensive houses, everything is done in white or light colors. Uh, that's or or people that like uh, wood-looking houses. You know, that's another uh, very expensive. Uh, uh, what do you call that when they design houses? You know, and the color themes that um, they either are into that wood color, you know, like a, a like a log house kind of thing, you know, where it's all wood and it's very uh, dark and rich and that kind of thing. Or you see the very opposite end. Uh, this is in Santa Monica I'm speaking of <laughs> because I've been in several places in Santa Monica and, and so that's the only reason I'm saying that. And um, so it's either very light color or very wood, you know, a lot of wood. I happen to like the white, you know, the, the, it looks like you're walking on a uh, marble floor. It's not marble. It's other things that they have. Uh, it's not terrazzo. I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, it's, it's like these big, huge things and, and the whole countertops and everything is done in, uh, very light colors and um, I can't remember the name of the paint on the wall is coffee something coffee 
something. I can't, it's by Bear Paints. Anyway, white means light, purity, bride of Christ, surrender, joy, and angels. There was a time in my life that I wanted, you know, when the angels were popular, those pictures of the angels, you know, I had angels, everything in my house uh, when we were doing television in our other house. Yeah, I like natural wood finishes. I can see that, Terry. Yeah, golden honey brown. Yeah, yep, decor. Thank you, Chrissy. That's the word I was looking for. Wealth and power. Who doesn't like that? Gold. <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> it reminds me of purity. Yes. Yeah. 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 Isn't it funny how we can just feel with each other because we sort of know each other a little bit here online. And so when we see, you know, you, oh, there's Terry. Terry. Yeah. Terry's a very outdoorsy and also Dave. And Eric hasn't popped in, but I see Eric as a blue-green, you know, very earthy, earthy person. I don't see Eric as a fire red, although he could be, could be, I don't know. Sometimes people have different, you know, things, different colors. Now, when I go out, I either wear white or black. That's me, pretty much. I always felt I like the basics. I do like blue but I, uh, I I just always would return back to wearing black or bear, wearing white that's what I always wore a lot of because it's basic it's simple and it's also I don't want to draw attention to myself so I always uh, found myself loving something solid white or black okay let's see white okay gray we didn't do gray yet Gray is old age. Well, gray hair. Hello. <laughs> dignity. Dignity. Yeah, hopefully when people get older, they've got dignity. <laughs> glory. Gray is glory. Okay, the well, way I would see glory for gray is the Holy Spirit. You know, the fog. Fog is gray. You know, so the glory. Honor humility and repentance these these words some of these words are repeating themselves it seems like in other colors okay yellow is the last one <laughs> beverly says i'm always afraid of spilling something when i wear white but it's pretty <laughs> yellow sunshine happiness oh that's the best sunshine happiness friendship caution Resurrection, fresh, new life, healing, hope, peace, and rest. And that's it. Yeah, I love, yeah, Christine, I could see you. Does glory and gray hair go together? <laughs> yeah, we, we've earned it, right? Nikki, we, we've got all of the years. We've got so much we've got so much uh oh we, i'm not gonna say old age we've got so much dignity i like that better we've got so much dignity we've got so much glory and honor and humility and repentance right we know that we know those words well <laughs> if a person is a fool when he is young then he will also be a fool when he is in his old age valerie says yeah you know people uh they seem to go back don't they and there's John Torres. God bless you, John. Yeah, so that's all I know, you guys. I don't... Uh, it's amazing how people always seem to go back, isn't it? Sunshine, lollipops, rainbows. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows are everything. That's what I feel when, da, 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 when we're together. I'm sorry. That was, who did that song? <clears throat> of course, my brain goes to music, but I think that's what Eric's referring to, too. Who did that song? Sunshine. I can hear it. It was like a song from the late 60s, wasn't it? Sing it. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, everything. That's what I feel when, da-da-da, when... 
we're together. Now, who is that? Who did that song, you guys? John Torres, who did that song? <laughs> See, John, you pop in. You're part of it. Leslie Gore. Yes, that's right, Eric. Thank you. I remember Leslie Gore. Do you guys remember her? You know, I was I was just a baby, of course. <laughs> I'm Canadian, but I really want to see California. Well, John, I, I hope California is here when you, if you do come, because with the dream that I saw this morning, whoa, who knows? Who knows? I'm Canadian. I'll tell you, I lived, uh, John, I don't know where you're at in Canada, but I lived in Lake, right by Lake Simcoe on the eastern part of Canada for about six months. I was uh, singing, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It's about 30, 40 minutes north of um, Toronto. It was absolutely gorgeous. I just loved Canada. Canada was so beautiful. Canada's gorgeous. You are very blessed to be in Canada. And Christine. So, uh, Christine is in southern Ontario, <clears throat> near where Amy Sample McPherson was born, right, Christine? Because I visited her grave, Christine. <laughs> her grave is uh, over in Glendale is where Amy is buried. And I remember it well. It's a big, long, uh, what do they call that, statue? Not a statue, but a, a big... Uh, you know, like a casket, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I am Canadian, Southern Ontario. Yeah. One day we will be able to see all the places we dream about when we fly. Isn't that something, Nikki? When I had this dream this morning, you know, um, it reminded me <clears throat> when my mother was, uh, the Lord was, I was having my last day with my mother right before he took her home in the hospital. And the night before, he sent me a dream before she passed. He sent me a dream. He showed me that she was in the hospital, in the bed, and that all of a sudden she was released. Her spirit was released from her body. She was free. And she rose up. And she flew all through, right through Placerita Canyon, because that was the way we would come home from the hospital, and a lot of ways. And she threw through, the, it was like God let her see her valley that she had lived so many years of her life in. And then she flew up. And it was just so amazing. And when I woke up the morning that Mother went to be with the Lord, I woke up, God gave me that song, God gave me that song, and I went to the hospital and I told Mama, I said, Mama, God gave me a dream and he showed me, you're going to be flying over the valley, over Placerita, you're going to be, I saw you and you were just flying. And it was as though I had eyes and I was flying with her and I could see what she could see. I think it's really important when people are in that transition of passing that we're totally honest with them. I had dreams with my father as well before he passed away last year. I really hope he's saved. Wow. Well, Lena, whatever God showed you, whatever God showed you. Yes, Nikki says, wonderful story. It is. And uh, then uh, I think it was that song that I had. A, I had a dream. You remember that song that God gave me? If you, I can't even think of the name of the title of the song right now. But he gave me that song in 2016, exactly. And it was the dream uh, about, uh, and there he was standing beside me, you know, that I woke up. I was taken in his presence. And then basically I woke up. And I realized I was still in my body kind of thing, you know. Anyway, it was wonderful. These times with the Lord are pre precious to us. Your dad passed away in 1998, John says. Wow. 
Well, it's not going to be long. I'm in Toronto City. Wow. Wow. Amen. He is faithful. I uh, was talking to a, a sister that's a nurse on the phone the other night, uh, keeping touch with the people that go to the church that we do go to once in a while. She said, God, I said, what do you think about this election? What's going on? She says, God is still on the throne. That was her first words that came right out of her mouth. I said, yes, he is still on the throne. That's exactly right. God is still on the throne, period. And he always will be. Yes, Christine, we're still praying for the chickens. Lena says she's praying for Christine's chickens to be returned. Amen. Wow, he told me thanks for helping me. Wow, John, that's amazing. John said that he had a dream and that his dad told him that he, John basically says he knew, he knows that his dad was saved because he had a dream of him and he told me thanks for helping me. Praise God. I totally, yeah, I remember he looked in his 40s. That's right. They're at their prime. And I can't wait. I can't wait. I don't know how long it's going to be, but I know it's going to be soon. And I don't know how long we have been on air, but I do need to uh, take my dad uh, to the doctor uh, this morning. He's got uh, retaining a little water in his feet. So I thank you for your prayers to remember that. But I said that uh, we should have that, you know, uh, whatever it's going to be, that we can take care of that before the weekend comes. Sometimes they can give you that, uh, what do they call that stuff? Uh, um, it starts with an L, uh, Ly Lyra, Lyra or something, and they can give that to you and it'll just dry up everything. And that's all I know. It's good to be with you too, Lena and Nikki and Christine and everybody. One hour. Thank you, Christine. Yeah, I better uh, sign off for now and um, continue on with the day. And I love you guys too. Grab my hand and squeeze it with all she had. Then she smiled at me. Then she closed her eyes. Wow. Beverly says, my other grandmother woke up and I was beside her. She grabbed my hand and squeezed it with all she had. She, and then she smiled at me and then she closed her eyes. Wow. Yeah, I, that's, uh, I think that's it, Valerie. Something like that. Yeah, Valerie, I can't. The name of it just... He died of cancer, and he looked very old and sick, but Jesus saved him. Thank you, Lord, for John's father is in heaven. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Christine. And Randy, I don't know where he's floating around. He's probably, he said to me, he says, Susan, I don't always pop in and type something, but I'm here. So we pray for you, Randy. And Sherry, God bless you. Oh, okay, my job is putting on so much on us that they can make more money but yet we have had no raise in three years we pray for sherry father god just take care of everything she needs in jesus name father god thank you for bringing this to us father so that we can pray for this situation in jesus name amen god bless you guys I'm going to play something great, Taken Away. I love it. Have a blessed day, you guys. Please stay in touch with me. If you need anything, you can write me at info at susanwaldrop.org. Prayer, <coughs> I'm sorry, prayer or pay, praise, can't talk. Vicki, I'm in pain 24-7 from fibromyalgia. In Jesus' name, Father, we rebuke that fibromyalgia. Get 
out of her. Get away from Vicky. Leave her alone. In Jesus' name. And I love you too, Sherry. Love you guys so much. I'm working on music this weekend and uh, some other things. I love Strong wind beside me 